Good Sunday morning. Welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. The final countdown to Election Day in Illinois, it's on. This morning, we're taking you inside the race for Illinois Attorney General. Democrat Kwame Raoul is seeking a second term after first being elected in 2018. He's facing a challenge from Republican Thomas DeVore, an attorney from Southern Illinois, who made a name for himself challenging COVID-19 related mandates during the pandemic. Now, over the last four years, Raoul's office reports recovering more than $180 million for Illinois taxpayers and are highlighting their work fighting for reproductive rights and things uh, against things like retail theft. He's worked in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, was a member of the state legislature for 14 years, and now incumbent attorney general for Illinois and Democrat Kwame Raoul joins us this morning. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. And I want to start with the one general question because some people may not understand. I want to clarify who the Illinois Attorney General works for. Uh, you're the chief legal officer, but do you represent the people of Illinois or are you the governor's lawyer? Uh, I'm going to give you a question that uh, uh, the answer that's both. Uh, I. Uh, mandated to represent the the governor um, the legislature uh, the various state agencies but I also mandated to represent the people of the state of Illinois whether it's through our uh, prosecutions we have um, certain items through our statewide grand jury that we uh, can go directly uh, and prosecute and then um, as long as there's acquiescence from state's attorneys, we can go into local uh, counties uh, when they're conflicted out, when they may need some help. Uh, for example, like in Vermilion County, mm -hmm. we've uh, prosecuted a number of murder cases because the uh, state's attorney was co uh, conflicted so you, out. You can sort of be anywhere. I, uh, you spent a, a fair amount of your time uh, defending over 30 lawsuits filed by your opponent in this race, uh, who sued the governor over mask mandates, some other executive orders. He had some temporary vic uh, victories with some, some blocks, uh, orders, but um, no final order success. What were your thoughts about those efforts? Uh, you know, I thought it was fair enough to ask the initial question. You know, he represented uh, Mr. Bailey in the, uh, the Darren I think Bailey, the, Darren Bailey in the, the um, initial lawsuit. But once the question is answered, um, you know, uh, it's a waste of the court's resource to file lawsuit after lawsuit, take a lot of people's money in the process, and, and getting the same answer in the end. One of the things he challenges me on defending uh, the governor's mitigations and the Department of Public Health mitigations, the data is clear that uh, we've saved more lives in the state of Illinois and we sent less people per, per capita to hospitals. Uh, in the state because, directly because of the effect of those mitigations. I mean, just as a little follow-up, and it's a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If you uh, agreed with the principle of, of any lawsuit filed against the governor, um, do you have to still represent, uh, you know, represent it? Because, and the state can't be sued because of immunity and all that, but do you still have to represent the governor when you sort of might agree with the lawsuit? It's a hypothetical question. Well, not anything yeah, specific. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to answer hypotheticals, but you know, the, there's a, there's a uh, constitutional and a statutory duty, duty to to, uh, have government representation. That said, in, in all of my representation throughout my career as a, a lawyer, um, I have an abidance to, to the law, right? And, 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 and so I have to use my discretion in that representation to be true to the law and to the facts. Being a prosecutor is part of your background. I want to talk about the Safety Act, as you know, sweeping overhaul in the state, eliminating cash bail on January 1st. 60 lawsuits consolidated <laughs> last week. The governor says changes are needed. Republicans say it's all terrible. Just, and I know there are some specific changes you propose, but where do you stand with it? What do you want to see change? Well, first of all, one of the criticisms is, is, is that the, of, of, of the process. And I actually worked on the Safety Act, a, a provision that's not controversial. And uh, there's a police certification and police training provision that I presided over 25 meetings with state's attorneys, with police chiefs, with sheriffs. And we came uh, to an accord on language on police certification and training. With regards to the cash bail, uh, provision. First of all, philosophically, I don't believe that cash should be the determining factor as to whether or not uh, somebody is held uh, pre-trial. It should be a measure of their risk to public harm or their flight risk. And we should use risk assessment to make those determinations, not much how much money you have in your pocket. I served in the legislature for 14 years. Guess what? We returned every year. Guess what we were doing predominantly? Amending uh, laws. Uh, the Safety Act has already been uh, amended. 
the process that we should utilize should be that legislative process. Those conversations are happening. We do have a veto session before the implementation the of the pretrial detention um, uh, prov provision. And so I think that process should be carried out, not fe fear mongering, uh, not misinformation that helps nothing. I want to tackle the, the crime guns issue with you a little bit because that's such a, a concern on people's minds. Um, one thing is the retail theft, right? That, that we've seen it getting up, and people may not know that your office has has something called the Organized Retail Crime Act. Yeah, and we had a task force, and we've been doing tr uh, uh, training and informing of law enforcement throughout the state, all the way to southern Illinois to uh, both ends, and. Uh, I chair uh, the, the, the task force. I also co-chair a national working group along with the Georgia Attorney General working on organized retail crime, which has really risen to a level where uh, it costs over $45 billion a, a year. Uh, and it should be distinguished from ordinary retail theft. These are uh, folks who go in and they're, they're, there's an organized crime element. It, 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 once monetized, it feeds gun trafficking, terrorism, uh, human trafficking. Um, and so uh, we're doing the work in collaboration with law enforcement partners uh, to crack down on this. Uh, these items are often sold on online platforms, uh, Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, and we've called to task some of those platforms to help us to, to crack down. So that's part of what you're dealing with in terms of, look, one of the problems with guns is that they're coming in from other states. Yes. Illinois has some strong gun laws, but what do you do about guns coming in from other states? Well, one of the things that we've done is we've, we've um, we hired um, some data scientists to help us develop what we call Crime Gun Connect. And so once law enforcement recovers a crime gun, they can go on the system that we've created, Crime Gun Connect, and trace the pathway of the gun. That way we could get to the to those who illegally traffic these guns. One of the, things, one of the key problems that we have with regards to gun violence is, is that guns are so abundantly available to people who are ineligible to possess them, people who we know will do harm with them. There's a whole industry based upon trafficking guns illegally to those people. Are you concerned your opponent did get the endorsement of the Illinois and Chicago chapters of the FOP, Fraternal Order of Police? Do you have a response to that? Uh, you know, I, I've enjoyed um, my uh, tenure of working in partnership with law enforcement. Um, you know, we mentioned the Safety Act earlier. Ironically, uh, the Illinois Chiefs of Police Association gave me the Public Servant of the Year award because of my collaborative work on, uh, on, on the Safety Act. So I enjoy my relationship with law enforcement partners. We work together uh, to, to fight crime within within the state and uh, you know at the end of the day I'll put up my history of working uh, as a prosecutor my opponent has no law enforcement experience whatsoever all right give me just a very quick question a lot of your ads have to do with abortion rights and all of that I guess just a very quick question we're out of time but what can your office do to, to protect reproductive rights as opposed to the legislature well we're doing it right now we're fighting a lawsuit by extremists who are trying to have the reproductive health act uh, overturn. We've put out guidance to people that abortion, uh, safe and legal abortion, is available within the state of Illinois. We put out guidance to law enforcement that you cannot enforce another state's law uh, against anybody seeking safe and legal abortion in the state of Illinois. And we working with, we're working with the Department of Justice with regards to FACE Act implementation to make sure people are safe going to and from providers. All right, Illinois Attorney General and Democratic nominee for the uh, next round of Attorney General Kwame Rule. Thanks for being with me this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, coming up next on WGN TV Political Report, Republican challenger Thomas DeVore joins me. Hear his plan for the office of Illinois Attorney General when we come back.